we have to be very careful how we look at you know common sense in football but that, that, i've got to say just on the face of that 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 does seem quite extraordinary standing officials down after games we know why uh well, after mistakes we know why uh, the pgml do it does that help or is it not a matter of fall off your bike get back on your bike as quickly as possible what what what's to be gained from hanging around at home for a fortnight well first of all i don't think it's ideal that the match officials get two matches in a weekend i don't think that works because if they make a mistake in the first match mm. it then puts an awful position for the second match and that could be easily avoided but i understand why because they're just lacking in a number of match officials when for example when we were in the premier league when i first started in 2004 there was 24 referees there's not enough match officials now to cover VAR and referees, the quality of. So therefore, they're having to double up, and that's not ideal, especially when you make such a mistake in the first game. Is it and not now, better though, Mark, just uh, sorry for butting in, so you make a mistake getting back on the bike or so, you know. You, yeah, but you it's know. when, yeah, but what happened, Chris, is if you, I understand that, and there should be a period of time for reflection, because I'm not sure if Darren England, like you said, jumped back on the bike and he was given a game, say, Monday night, after this on a Saturday, and he makes another mistake or a perceived mistake, the pressure would be immense. I think what we need to do is have a reflection of time. I think Darren England needs to take maybe a week out just to reflect, the need to examine what they could do better. I think the PGM World should bring all the match officials together to do that every two weeks to discuss this, how they can make reduce the mistakes. But I think in the future, maybe one or two weeks, Darren England will come back and I think he'll come back stronger. But I just don't like this idea where he has two matches in a weekend and therefore it's now perceived because we all see it that he's been taken off the next match. If he'd been rested at the weekend, they can make an argument saying he's been rested even though he'd been dropped. But now we all see it because he's been taken off the match I think uh, straight away after his mistake. The thing that surprises me about that, Mark, is that essentially you're suggesting that we don't have enough match officials to go round, which which in the modern age um, seems extraordinary. Chris, you, I think you wanted to make one point, didn't you, about why the game couldn't have been stopped once Darren England realised the mistake that he'd made. Yeah, so so I mean, you, you'll you'll know the procedure far better than myself and Ian. But what, once the error had been made and that misunderstanding had had uh, happened, and and the free kick was taken to restart play, there there must have been uh, a period within the the VAR hub where everybody realised the mistake had been made, and surely a call could have been made then to just get to the right decision do the right thing just hold the hands up and say right this is awful what's happened it, it okay we're not following the correct procedure mark but we need to come to the to the uh, right decision and do the right thing yeah and we all talk about common sense doing the right thing and we all know and recognize from you know the video we don't need, even need to hear the audio darren england realizes and Dan Cook and probably the operator of Hawkeye realised the mistake while the ball goes out of play at the next phase, the next phase went out for a throw-in. And at that point, it's when they realised that the game hadn't restarted with actually a kick from the centre mark after a goal had been scored. So they realised some seconds after. The problem we have, Chris, is that if the they happened after one second and they realised and they shouted, it's a goal, it's a goal, it's a goal, one second after the free kick had been taken, the referee, if he'd been clever, could have quickly stopped it, pretend to move the free kick back, and then bought himself some time, and then they could have restarted with a goal. So they could have managed it after maybe one or two seconds. But after five, ten seconds, then the ball goes out to, for the throw-in. If they restarted play and rechanged the decision and give the goal, then what you're doing is it's not an error by the 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 the, the VAR, which is under the laws of the game, a game can't be replayed if a VR makes a mistake. But if a VR breaks the protocol, that protocol's within the laws of the game. And therefore, Liverpool wouldn't be just writing this statement last night the way they have. They would have been requesting through the Football Association today that the game could be replayed. So we can use common sense in some parts of refereeing, but if we'd use common sense in this situation, we would have been looking at a game being replayed 
and I've never heard a game being replayed in the Premier League would have caused a, such a huge problem for P.J. Well in the Premier League. So, yes, we can argue is the right result happened in the end for the game of football. Yes, but it's still an error by the VAR that should have been put correct. But I understand people saying common sense we would love the goal to be given, but under the laws of the game, if they've done that, it's a bit like having 12 players on the pitch and a substitute had been allowed on and a player hadn't left the field to play and the team was playing with 12, that game could be replayed. So we have to be very careful how we look at you know common sense in football. But that, that, I've got to say, just on the face of that, 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 that does seem quite extraordinary for such a a small space of time to go by you know you, you said what five seconds whatever it is and they can't reverse a decision uh, and you know Tottenham would have been angry about it had the decision uh, been reversed but you know when Ange Postecoglou and the Tottenham players would have would have seen that decision um, you know they would have I think accepted it it seems extraordinary you know what you're talking about about replaying a game because of a procedural error mistakes do happen I mean, what what would what what would you have done, Mark, had you been in the VAR hub and and, and after that decision was made and, and how that panned out? What what would you have actually done? I mean, you know, I put you on the spot there, but I, you know. Yeah, I, no, no. Yeah, I, I told you. Listen, I think there's just a huge. I, you know, we all don't know what's going on. I think Liverpool are requesting the audio. I think what happened in this position is Adrian Holmes, the assistant referee, has allowed the offside, because he believes it's an offside. So he's allowed the player to continue, which under the new, or under the VAR instructions, the assistant has to allow the outcome to happen, which the outcome was a goal. So once the goal is scored, Adrian Holmes would have clearly said, offside, 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 down the earpiece. So all of the match officials, as well as the VAR and the AVR, would have heard Adrian Holmes shout offside. And at that point, I think all referees that I've known, including myself, would have put the arm up for offside, blew the whistle, put his arm up for offside and communicated to all the players, offside, offside, offside. And therefore, the original decision, everybody would have known, was offside. And I just don't know at this point why why Darren England checked. Yes, he checked the offside. He checked it with one line, which is adequate because why to use the two lines if the offside is not so difficult in this case it's not so difficult so he used the one line and at that point he's realized we where it's on side check complete and it was a complete miscommunication that darren england didn't understand while watching the match live and the avar that the actual original decision on the field to play was offside offside and that's the communication problem and i think what we need to look at going forward is better communication and I know PJ Moyle have employed Phil Bentham who was an ex rugby league referee to help with the communication and what I what I find is they're using basic words and not telling the overall picture so when you listen to TMO you listen to cricket for example sports that we can learn from the communication is precise clear and everybody understands it on side check complete if you don't hear onside correctly, it could mean offside if you don't hear it clearly. So offside, onside, check complete. For me, there should have been, the referee could easily say the original decision is offside. The VR says, okay, the original decision is offside. I've checked the offside. It's onside. Therefore, the goal should be allowed. Check complete. And then all of this information could have been picked up by six match officials to make sure that we didn't restart the play incorrectly, Mark, which is what it, we did it, in this occasion. 